Welcome to Cali High episode 64, Soy Cowboy. This is the fourth in a new series called A Work in Progress, a retrospective of adventures. In this episode, I join the Navy, get stationed at Naval Air Station Point Magoo, and decide to put a band together with the help of some friends. This episode ends in a recording of the first performance of the band, Soy Cowboy, live on Tom Schnabel's Morning Becomes Eclectic at KCRW. Prologue. During my travels in Thailand from 1981 to 1983, I fell in love with Thai culture and Thai music. At some point I realized the sound of the female Thai voice had a captivating quality about it, not only in song but even in speech. It was something about the way Thai women emphasized tones differently than Thai men, which made their voices musical. In 1985 I joined the Navy when I needed a job and the Colombian weed business had dried up. By 1987, I was working as an avionics technician on four H-46 Sea Knight helicopters at the Search and Rescue Division of the Naval Air Station Point Magoo, known as SAR Hilo. This story takes place while I was in the Navy. Spring 1987. I was jogging around the half mile track at Naval Air Station Point Magoo, looking at the radar towers on the hill and thinking what a beautiful day. It was a clear spring day and the sky was azure blue with fluffy white cotton ball clouds dotting the sky. The night before I had been talking about my idea for a band with my good friend Kenny Miller. The band would have Thai female background singers and it would be a blend of cultures, a yin-yang band, with American guys and Thai girls. We were thinking of what to call the band. We both laughed as Kenny threw out the name Soy Cowboy. It was a pun on the name of a side street off of Sukhumvit Road in Bangkok that happened to have a bunch of go-go bars on it. F-14s were using afterburners to launch themselves skyward and one of our helicopters was landing back in front of the Sarhilo hangar. A few more laps around the track and I remembered hearing a jazz version of Johnny Mercer's Old Cow Hand from the Rio Grande on Tom Schnabel's Morning Becomes Eclectic on KCRW. I knew the song from the Dan Hicks and his Hot Licks album, Striking It Rich. And then it hit me. Old Cow Hand from the Rio Grande would be Soy Cowboy's first song. The vision popped into my head fully formed, and somehow I knew it would come to fruition. Back at the barracks, I showered, put my work uniform on, and drove over to the SAR hangar and removed and replaced an IFF box on Bloodhound 14. Bloodhound was the call sign for our SAR helicopters. After filling out the maintenance action form, I got Senior Chief Don Oshaline to sign off on the job and he checked my toolbox. All tools accounted for and I was out of there. It was Friday and I hopped in my VW van and drove off the base and hopped on the 101. When I got to my mom's house in Encino, I called Tim Long, who had been the bass player and fellow collaborator in a few bands I had been in. I told Tim what I wanted to do. He said he was down with the idea and knew an engineer we could hire who also played drums. His name was Joe Remersa. I asked Tim if Joe was tall. He said yes. I told Tim I knew Joe briefly from North Hollywood High School. The next part of the puzzle was where to find a Thai girl to sing on the tracks. 
I drove over to Tim's house in Studio City, which was up a driveway that went south from Ventura Boulevard. Tim was subletting the place from Charles Polachek, a.k.a. Chaz, or as he became known on stage, Wade Charles the Twenty-Third. Chaz lived in the unit above Tim's and was a talented guitar player who had been in a few bands with Tim and I. We were up in Chaz's apartment overlooking the valley below and I gave them a fully inspired pep talk about my idea. They were mesmerized. Beautiful Thai girls in a band sounded great on paper. After a while, the spell wore off and Chaz became noncommittal. Even with Chaz on the fence, Tim and I still had to find at least one Thai girl to sing on the recording, and so we embarked on a talent scouting mission. We started frequenting Thai restaurants and talking to Thai girls. Most of them were amused by the idea but couldn't sing. Finally, after countless pad thais and singhas later, we found a girl. Her name was Ari. She was a pretty girl with a bob cut, and she looked great in a cowboy hat. We found her at Chitlada West, the Thai restaurant right below Tim and Chaz's. I borrowed $1,500 from the Navy Credit Union, and we arranged a date for the recording with Joe. He booked a little back house studio behind a house just south of Wilshire in Beverly Hills. The studio was called The Cottage. It was small, but had a great vibe. It was in a lush backyard shaded by jacaranda trees, and the interior was wood paneled with comfy chairs and a couch. On a Saturday morning in late spring of 87, we recorded the rhythm tracks. Tim played bass and acoustic guitar, Joe had the drums programmed, and I put down the piano track. In the afternoon, Ari arrived with her husband, and we started knocking out her yippee-i-yo cahiers. Then we asked her to compose some Thai lyrics to go along with the end of the song, and while she was doing that, I played a keyboard slide on a Yamaha DX7. I nailed it in one take. By then, Ari had come up with the lyrics. She did a great job for being on the spot. My favorite line translated to, Old Uncle Cowboy, stay a while. Come listen to a song and play some music. Ari sang her lyrics and then recorded the spoken word at the end of the tune. And then we realized we had no lead vocals. So all three of us, Tim, Joe, and myself, recorded a lead vocal. I had Joe put a rough mix of all three vocals on a cassette, and Tim and I took it to my mom's house. I knew right away that Joe was the lead singer from the moment I heard him put down his vocal, but to keep things fair, I had my mom pick. Virginia had been in show business and was unquestionably qualified to make the choice. She listened to all three versions and picked Joe's vocal without hesitation, and that's how Joe Remerso got his first lead singer gig. We finished the lead vocals and mixing back at the cottage a week later. Joe's vocal had an element of humor and playfulness, which later manifested itself in his stage persona. After recording the song, we scheduled a promo photo session at my mom's house and shot a few Polaroids with all of us wearing cowboy hats. Later that week on Friday, I typed an introductory letter to Tom Schnabel and drove to Santa Monica with the letter, a Polaroid, and a cassette. KCRW was in a basement on the campus of Santa Monica City College. I walked in and asked to talk to Tom Schnabel. He wasn't there, but an assistant showed me where his desk was and said I could leave the promo pack there. I neatly arranged the letter in the middle of the desk and put the Polaroid in the center of the letter, weighted the down with the cassette, and drove home. The next night I was celebrating with Kenny Miller, who had just taken the bar exam. We were in his hotel room in Pasadena and the phone rings, and it's my mom telling me she just got off the phone with Tom Schnabel and he was planning to play Old Cow Han on Morning Becomes Eclectic that next Monday. That Monday, Tom played the song. 
that was great. And then a few months passed, and I was talking to Kenny Miller, and he said, What's happening with Soy Cowboy? You seem to have dropped the ball. That hit hard. It was a Monday, and I was at Sick Bay on base at NAS Point Magoo, getting some dental work done. I picked up the phone in the hall and called KCRW and asked to speak to Tom Schnabel. Tom got on the phone and I told him who I was and right away he was asking me to bring the band in for a live performance. I said, sure, but I need a couple of months. He put me on the phone with Ariana Morgenstern, his producer, and we set a date for the show. Okay, so I got us a gig, but there was no band. We had made one recording of one song and now we were going to play KCRW live. The big question was, who was we? I called Tim and Joe and they agreed to do the show. We were able to talk Chaz into playing guitar as well. Joe would program the drums on his drum machine and we needed to find a few more Thai singers. Tim and I were back talent scouting for female Thai vocalists. LA, and in particular Hollywood, had a few upscale Thai restaurants with good looking waitresses, but could any sing and did they want to be in the world's first Thai western band? A term later coined by Schnabel himself. Tim and I scoured three Chandaras, Larchmont, Coenga, and Pico Boulevard. We visited Tommy Tang's on Melrose. Gelato West below his apartment on Ventura, which has its own little story for another time, Thai Town further down Melrose, and a restaurant next to Jumbo's Clown Room on Hollywood Boulevard east of Western. Can't remember its name, but it is now called Krung Ted. We found a willing waitress at Chandra in Larchmont named Tumi Tao Patom. Tumi was beautiful and had a coy sexiness about her. She was always pleasant and had a radiant smile. We found an actual singer at Thai Town on Melrose. Thai Town catered to Thais mostly and had live Thai music nightly. Singers, mostly female, were accompanied by a cheesy organ played by a Thai guy with a drum machine. One Friday night during this time, after driving into town from Point Magoo, Kenny Miller and I watched the show at Thai Town while eating. The singer was singing traditional popular Thai love songs before Thai music became sappy westernized pop and there wasn't an eye in the restaurant that wasn't watching her. Kenny was mesmerized and he said, I'd marry her. Tim and I came back the next week. We talked to the singer, Candy Manasi was the name she went by, and she said she'd give it a try. And now we had three singers, Ari, Toomey, and Candy. Meanwhile, I had rented a small room in a house in Sherman Oaks that I would use on the weekends from a friend of Kenny's whose name eludes me. The house had a piano in the living room, and no one was ever there except me usually. I remember writing our first original song, Lily Pads and Rock Cod, one Friday afternoon after driving into town from the bass. The song was written in under an hour. Music and lyrics just came to me. Flatbeds and watermelons on a dusty road. Why does it seem like I have no home? I'm looking for something. What are you looking for, cowboy? We started rehearsing in my mom's garage on Alonzo Place in Encino. Mumsy was used to bands rehearsing in the garage and would come out and watch at times. But scheduling six people was a nightmare, and during the six year life of the band's first incarnation, it never got any better. At Soy Cowboy's height, we had eight people in the band, three girls and five guys. Rarely was there a rehearsal with everybody there. In Mom's Garage, we worked on Old Cow Han and a new song called Lily Pads. We threw in a Marty Robbins song, Saddle Tramp, and another newly written song, Back at the Grace Hotel. To do the KCRW show, I had to get permission to take the day off from my immediate commanding officer, Senior Chief Don O'Shaleen. 
a very cool supervisor who helped me with difficult jobs, let me read him essays, and who was also an avionics technician. He looked at the reason for the request and approved it, laughing in his unique and ironic way. The day came. We played KCRW. The show was Tom Schnabel's Morning Becomes Eclectic, and you had to get there early in the morning, and the band easily checked the eclectic box. Everyone was nervous. This was our first gig, and we would be live on the radio. We dragged our equipment down into the KCRW basement located in a building on the campus of Santa Monica City College. Tom introduced himself and his producer, Ariana, to the band, as well as the engineer, Jeff. We set up in the studio, and it was a bit cramped with cables running everywhere. It was showtime. Tom started talking about cassettes that he had received, and... And now, here's the recording of Soy Cowboy's first ever gig, and the first of many KCRW shows. Courtesy of Vince Nicoletti, and I put it into the machine, and I listen to it. We receive a lot of cassette tapes, um, most of them not really solicited, that uh, we hardly have a chance to listen to. Being an eclectic station with a wide format, we get tapes in all shapes, sizes, colors, styles, from uh, uh, real B-grade stuff to occasionally, and very, uh, sort of not that often really, uh, something really good. Uh, Vince Nicoletti's tape and music was one of the good ones and certainly one of the most unusual ones that we've gotten. Um, for one thing, it mixes country and western music with Thai vocals. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome you, Vince Nicoletti, and your band, Soy Cowboy, to the station. Hey. Thank you, Tom. How are you? Uh, Jeff, let's raise the volume a little bit up there so we can hear everybody talking. I uh, would like you, uh, first of all, to uh, um, maybe explain, tell us a little bit about your band and uh, maybe introduce the members before we get going. Uh, well, Tom, it was, uh, I, what I wanted to do actually was put two parts of my soul into some music. I went to Thailand and fell in love with the culture and the people, and when I came back here, you know, I left part of my heart there, so uh, I decided that I could put it together in this little project here. So that's what I've done, and I've gathered together a great bunch of people here, and uh, we have a great time doing this little project. Well, it's the kind of music that we like as well, so... What he's trying to tell you is he's a wacko, and uh, he's a, he's aware of it. Uh, well, I, I won't argue with that. What, what a what a voice! That's 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 Vince there. <laughs> All right, uh, Vince, why don't you why don't you uh, strike up the band? Yes, well, strike up the band. Also introduce the band members, and then let's go into our first tune. We have four tunes uh, that you're going to perform <laughs> for us. So let's move on. Alrighty, this is uh, Joe Remersa. Hello, hello, hello. He sings and plays drum machine. Drum machine. This is uh, Tim Long. <laughs> Hi. Face, yes, it's AKA me. the lengthy one. <laughs> This is Wade Chaz on guitar here. He's our hired gun for the day. And these beautiful young ladies are Candy. Hi. Ari and Toomey. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the station. Uh, so let's see, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a it's a, a seven piece band. Seven person band. It is indeed. All right. Seven, seven piece people. band. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll shut up. Let's hear some music. <laughs> Courtesy of Soy Cowboy. Thank you very much, Tom. Well, boys, you ready? Let's saddle up this beast and ride it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Cowboy who never rode the cow, never rode the steer, cause I don't know how, and I sure ain't fixing this stuff. 
started now. Yippee-yay, okay. Yippee-yay, okay. I'm an old care hand from the Rio Grande, and I learned to ride. State, cause I ride the range on my Ford V8. Get it? is Soy Cowboy here at KCRW 89.9 FM. Uh, people want to know if you guys are performing any place. Well, Tom, we're uh, working with Brendan Mullen right now and getting a show together at the uh, Lingerie, and uh, he's trying to organize a kind of a genre around this idea, so hmm. probably sometime this fall, early. Thank you, Vince. Uh, Next up by Soy Cowboy, I guess we have lily pads and rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, that's lily pads and uh, rock card, you know. It's a story about lily. You know, when I first uh, left the States and hit Thailand, I was just uh, still looking for something. Always looking for something. So... Uh, I taught my horse to swim, I waterproofed my boots, and swam to Thailand. And when I got to Thailand, I was might bit hungry, so I went looking for a chili dog, and that's when I found her. It was Lily, and it's Lily Pads. And I still hear her now. 
็ไม่สบายด้วยนี่ก็ต้องไปหาหมออยากให้พี่อยู่ที่นี่ด้วยจังเลยพี่สบายดีหรือเปล่าคิดถึงเสมอlistening to KCRW Santa Monica and Morning Becomes Eclectic. I'm Tom Schnabel. With me in the studio performing live for your listening pleasure is Soy Cowboy. Next up, oh, okay. Go right ahead. This may or may not have been written by Marty Robbins. I'm no good, and I never amount to a thing. Well, I may be a drifter, and I may be no good, but there's joy in the song that I sing. I'm as free as a breeze, and I ride where I please, saddle tram. And I 
night I will rest beneath a blanket of blue. I doubt if I ever will change. Or I might even dream of a lady I knew. I might even whisper her name. I might even wind up in Idaho And visit a cute little miss A sweet little someone I used to know I might even stop long enough for a kiss at old tram Well, I might even ride back to Thailand someday might even stop for a while Though branded no never I'll never be tied down Trapped by a fair lady smile Saddle tram I'm as free as a breeze And I ride where I please Saddle tram Did I did I interrupt you, Tom, that last time? Not at all. Okay, sorry about that. By the time we got to Thailand, uh, <laughs> you know, we needed a place to stay. Anybody ever hear of the Grace Hotel? Oh, oh. Uh, Don't all answer at once here. I never heard of it. Okay, <clears throat> well, uh, this is gonna be the last song here. As soon as I get my drummer ready. Drummer's been drinking too much, I think. <laughs> we give you, drummer. Uh, this song is called Back at the Grace Hotel. This is another Vince Nicoletti original. It, surrounded by the sound of three jukeboxes Next door at the beer garden Beef salad on a plate And I'm up in my room Waiting by the pool in the tropic sun I think I'll have another Coca-Cola Soon I will be back in the shade You know I traveled far for this Arabs to the left, Germans to the right I'm such a yank I'm all right, you know I'm feeling cool, it's 110 down at the Grace Hotel. the best but it's got some needs you know I've never strayed too far from this room back at the grace
To this day, Tim, Joe, and Chaz are some of my closest friends. Without their help and talent, I never would have been able to pull it off. Sometime after the show, Tom mentioned the high production value on the recording, which was due to Joe's engineering. Tom Schnabel and I became good friends, and still are, and while I always tried to get Joe to go back to Thailand with me, it was Tom who ended up on that adventure a few years later. From that first show on KCRW, Soy Cowboy found a video director, cool gigs in LA clubs, and eventually a record deal. But first I had to deal with the US Navy. And it was inevitable that over the band's first six years, some of the guys would end up with some of the girls, which can be a recipe for disaster. We eventually got a real drummer, none other than Brian Glasscock, a truly lovable Englishman who had been in the motels. I nicknamed him Phallus Crystallis. There were eight girls in the six-year life of our first go-round with Soy Cowboy, and I would like to thank every one of them for their time and hard work. There was Ari, and I don't remember her last name, Tumi Talpatom, Candy Manasi, also known as Kanda Pitakun, Moy, and I can't remember her last name, sorry, Prinya Kusuponan, Sarah Sihaman, Leela Utasing, and Anne Suksaman. Ari wrote the lyrics for Old Cow Hand. Candy wrote most of the Thai lyrics for the band after that. Prinya and Sarah contributed to writing after Candy left the band. I want to thank them mostly for going along with such a wacky, one-of-a-kind project. Thanks, from the bottom of my heart. Stay tuned for Soy Cowboy Part 2, coming soon. You've been listening to Cali High episode 64, Soy Cowboy, fourth in a new series titled A Work in Progress, A Retrospective of Adventures, written, produced, and recorded by Vince Nicoletti. I want to thank all the members of Soy Cowboy, Tim Long, Joe Remersa, Charles Polachek, Brian Glasscock, Ari, Kanda Pitakun, Tumi Talpatom, Moy, Prinya Kusuponan, Sarah Sihaman, Lila Utising and Anne Suksamran. Featured music Old Cow Hand by Johnny Mercer, Saddle Tramp by Marty Robbins, Lily Pads and Rock Cod and Back at the Grace Hotel by Vince Nicoletti. Incidental music Vince Nicoletti. Kelly High's theme written and recorded by Vince Nicoletti, Jordan Webb, and Namir Blade. Cali High podcast and theme are copywritten and the logo is trademarked. Music for the end credits I Don't Know What to Say by Vince Nicoletti. Please like, follow, and subscribe to Cali High on YouTube. Email us with any questions to podcast at gmail.com. We're on Instagram at Cali High LA on all podcast platforms in audio. Cali High is a Chenzo Nico production. Stay safe and be blessed.